Yardley Smith has been doing voiceover work for more than 30 years. It's not the acting career she originally intended, but now her voice is synonymous with one of the most iconic characters in TV history. Okay, these days you can also hear her voice in a very different element. I remember how hard it was to be an outsider. Yardley Smith has one of the most recognizable voices in show business. I just play away my blues on the saxophone. She is Lisa Simpson on the longest running American sitcom in history. Celebrating 30 years of that signature saxophone and fights with her brother Bart. Ow! <laughs> You've seen her on screen as well in Mad Men. Now I apologize, but we need your permission. The Big Bang Theory. Why thank you for noticing. And in blockbuster films like As Good As It Gets. Didn't get emotional and tried not to terrify you. I'm Yardley. And I'm Zibby, and we're fascinated by true crime. And now Smith's stretching her talents even further, producing and co-hosting a popular true crime podcast, Small Town Dicks. What's the protocol? You get the SWAT team start to incrementally get in position. Featuring the detectives in Small Town USA, breaking big cases. Yardley Smith, it is such a thrill to have you back again. Thank you. So how, why did you make this transition? I mean, obviously you've got the, the, the nighttime gig, but what interested <laughs> you in, in small-time violent crime? I, I've always been a rule follower, and so I was also always fascinated by people who don't value the same things that we value in order for society to function well. <laughs> so... Who are those people who are willing to break that trust? And I'm a person who likes the good guys to win, so I also want to know that there are forces of good out there that can set the train back on the tracks. People are so into true crime these days. What do you think it is? And then tell me about this podcast, a little bit about it, why people love it so much. I think what, so I co-host this podcast with my co-creator and best friend, Zibby Allen, and two identical twin detectives, Dan and Dave. Whose identity is not revealed, by That's the way. That's right. So we, and we change all the names of all our victims, and we also never tell you where the crimes take place, wow. and it is out of respect for the victims, because it's really not about who the crime happened to. It's about how justice was served, mm. and the cases really are the star, and um, all of our cases are told by the detectives who broke the case. So Zibby and I actually almost do none of the talking. Mm. We, we are the audience. We're mm. you, who would yeah. ask all the questions that you would if you had the opportunity or the guts. You know, I, like millions of, of people worldwide, I'm a huge Simpsons fan. Been watching them ever since they were uh, in shorts on the Tracy Ullman show. Lisa Simpson, has, has she changed over the years? Has she evolved? There's, there's this constant debate about the characters and whether they yeah. are the same now as they were 30 years ago or whether these characters actually, like most real-life characters, whether they do grow. Absolutely, they grow. Um, although the funny thing is, Lisa Simpson is eight, and every time she has a birthday, she turns eight. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that. Why? What? What's the problem with that? Um, Lisa Simpson, you know, her. One of the things I love about her most is her resilience, hmm. because they put that girl through so much. Oh my God. Every time they give her something, she never gets to keep it. Nope. Twenty-two minutes later, she oh. doesn't have it anymore. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's a friend or a pony yep. or in anything, the fact that that girl still feels like the glass is half full oh. is extraordinary to me. But you know, to me, this almost seems like it's come full circle. In that, Lisa would be the person who would investigate hmm. uh, Chief Hibbard. You know, if, uh, if that's if, well said, if, Al. If he that's was, if she was looking at, you know, small town crime. <laughs> she would. In Springfield. And and with enormous empathy. Yes. You know, one of the things that we really wanted to do with this podcast, although, and what, it's an artifact of um, doing it with the detectives who actually broke the cases, yeah. is we wanted to show that really fine police work is being done with these incredible crimes in small town like people think you know small town detectives what do you do just rescue a cat out of a tree mm -hmm. but in fact they're dealing with the same level of depravity and recklessness mm. and disregard for human life as policemen in big cities sure. and yet if you're part of a small agency you have to wear multiple hats they just don't have the person power for there mm -hmm. to be a separate SWAT team yeah. if you're a detective you're also part of the SWAT team so yeah. you keep all that stuff in your trunk and while there is a worthy conversation certainly um, across the nation about the bad actors in law enforcement 
for us, we really believe that 99% of the time people are trying to do the very best job they can, doing it well with incredible integrity. Well, thank you. Well said. And I should also, Twitter, don't get upset. It's Chief Wiggins. I know. Okay, so, uh, Wiggum. Wiggum. Chief Wiggum. <laughs> Lay off Al. That's right. Well, thank you very much. You heard it from Yardley <laughs> Smith. Thanks so much. And Thank the, the podcast, Small Town Dicks, available everywhere. And of course, uh, could, could Lisa maybe? Uh, oh, take yes, this out? I'd love it. The break? Oh, yes, yay. yes. Okay. And you can watch The Simpsons Sunday nights on Fox. People, we will be right back. Oh, my yes! God. Yes! <laughs> I loved it. Yes!